Hello everyone and welcome back to another fantastic Star Studded episode of the Super Show podcast. I don't know what number of episode it is, I don't know what day of the week it is, all I know is that I'm here and my good friend Chris is here to talk about video games. How are you sir? Hello, I am good and I am uh, I'm chuckling because <clears throat> the words that are coming out of your mouth, Jamie, do not match the, the tone in which they are presented. What do you mean? Elaborate. <laughs> it's like... Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, oh, was, was fantastic... That, okay. uh, <laughs> I didn't mean that for, for that to be low energy, like, okay? I'm, it's, this, it's all right, mate. You know what, like, we're, we're here. That's the most We are large thing. and we are in charge, and that is the most important thing. And hopefully, at least two people are here listening. And if you think that there are two ears per person, that's four ear canals that we could, like, ooze our syrup into. So let's exactly. fucking go for it. That's actually not a bad idea when we're working with sponsors, is instead of telling them how many listeners we have, we tell them how many ears we fill. So we can just double it. Like, hey, like, yeah. do you know we have over 10,000 ears on YouTube every, like, <laughs> I, don't, I think you just kind of cracked the code there on, um, on numbers. Yeah. It, it's my own take on the Da Vinci Code uh, YouTube edition. It's yeah. good. It's very good. No, yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. the Mona Lisa was. It turns out if you scrub away a fine layer of the Mona Lisa's surface, not only does she have eyebrows, but she also reveals the key to cracking the YouTube algorithm. That's where it's hidden, in the Louvre mm. the whole time. Interesting. French words. Do you know eh? why... Sh French words, can you believe it? Do you know why the uh, Mona Lisa doesn't have eyebrows? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci didn't finish it in time. That was the last thing he had to do, and he started having a wank. Well, you're halfway there, Jamie. Okay. Actually. He wanked yeah. them off. He, he, he had a bit of a tug. Yeah, okay. okay. He had a bit of a tug. Uh, finished, but, you know, like, kind of on the picture. Right, okay. And he's like, fuck, I, 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 can't, I can't do this. And he just had to kind of like wipe it off and just kind of smeared it. Pulled a bit of a, a, a Mr. Bean, you know, from the Mr. Bean movie. I'm with you. Just fucked up Whistler's, Whistler's mother completely. And he just, you know, fuck it, like, let me just paint over it. No eyebrows, done. What there the, you go. Because, nah. you know, dead, deadlines, deadlines are happen for everyone. Oh, so. yeah, I'm, deadlines are a legitimate thing. I'm sure he had client feedback to, and I'm sure they wrote him a strongly worded, <laughs> Letter via Pigeon Courier, like, oh, in version two, we need the eyebrows. But you've also just made me realize something really weird. If something, if somebody in, I'm going to say that era, because I'd love to know, like, what year Leonardo da Vinci was fucking walking around in, but I don't, because everything passed yeah, a certain fucking point. Assassin's Creed, that's what and you're going to say. It's, exactly. Alongside the. Well, what was he in? Brotherhood. Or, oh, wait, that's. um. <laughs> syndicate, syndicate, no, syndicate, syndicate, syndicate. Jesus, if he was around in syndicate that actually you know what, you're actually you spot on that would be some fucking some fucking assassin's creed bullshit Look, where Leonardo da Vinci is still alive in syndicate it's the animus don't question it crazy things have happened what I was going to ask though is that if they wanted to obtain pornographic materials did it have to be paintings like would you go up to a da Vinci and be like bro like you gotta paint me some chick spreading it so I can fucking J off this weekend. <laughs> Jay off. He didn't oh want to say the word God. jerk. It was a very controversial word back in the day. Oh, I see. Jay off. I like it. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. I think there was probably a market for it. I just don't think that... Uh, I, I almost said Leonardo DiCaprio there. Uh, just Leonardo. I just don't think he would have been into it. I think that, you know, he... he saw himself as an auteur. He was above he didn't it. didn't want to stoop to those lows. Yeah, he's above it. Like, he's above like it. Kojima. Um, he's all about the, like the, close-ups of tits and asses and feet, but he won't show the nudity. Yeah, and he's going to make you feel really bad about the fact that he's made the nudes nude. Yeah, exactly. You know? You're going to feel so bad when you find out why uh, Quiet is wearing skimpy underwear. You know there's a, a reason in, she had to the, spread her arsehole, right? If she doesn't spread her arsehole, she can't live. She breathes the <laughs> she her arsehole. She can't. There's like a really intense interview where like she was being translated. It's like, yes, and if the anus does not pucker, she cannot survive for more than five to ten minutes. It's like pure, <laughs> like the, the worst possible justification for his disturbing, oh my god, um, illicit acts. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know, you know, I I agree though, Chris. I think there would have been a market for pornographic paintings back in the good old days. Much as I think yeah. that there is a market for video games 
in the present day, depending on what frame rate, mm-hmm. frame rate your video games run at. And if there's a market <laughs> for video games, there must, by extension, be a market for random white people talking about video games. And that is what we are here to do for oh. you today. And we're doing it not just in one place, but in all kinds of places simultaneously. You can catch us on YouTube. And if you're over there right now, why not subscribe to the channel? Leave a comment. We sometimes pick out certain comments to be the comment of the week. So if you like the idea of oh. your words being read by our voices, that is a way to do it. You can also just reach out to us on social media like Twitter, the handle over there is at Super Show Pod. And if you don't want to watch the video, if you don't want to tweet us, you just want to listen to something. You know, just pure voices, like Chris said, filling your ear canals or canals, as I like to call them. <laughs> then this podcast is available on major podcasting platforms like Spotify, like iTunes, like Google Podcasts. And if none of the above applies for you, there is, of course, Paisley Radio the Mm ever-reliable digital radio service at paisleyradio.com. This thing is beamed out on Thursdays at 10 p.m. It's repeated on Mondays, so you can always catch it there if nowhere else. Oh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? We we ha- we now have a YouTube handle as well because YouTube have rolled Ooh, out wee. handles. Did you know that, Jamie? And um, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea for us to have the handle at Super Show. Hmm. Instead of at Super Show Pod, like the rest of our handles, so I mean, I'm going to see if I can. I'm going to see if I can change it because I don't. Like, it's one of know. those things where it's another one to remember, and it's another variation we have to kind of make clear. But it's cleaner. There's a there's a cleanliness to it. Yeah, that, that's why I went for. It. I was like, nah, at Super Show. Yeah. Although, but then again, what does a handle on YouTube fucking mean? Like, oh, what is it? Is it going to help you? Is it going to help you? Like. Search it. You just fucking search Super Show. We're there. Can you so tag I, people now in like the, if you uh, in the description of something? Could you at a you, another channel? Maybe is that a thing? Or could you add uh, channels in the comment section with a handle? See, that would be kind of interesting, uh, wouldn't it? Oh, okay. Homework for everyone listening. Oh, hold on, that was wrong. Um, homework for everyone, kind of like listening. Why don't you just watch your favorite non Super Show video and at us? In the comments, and let's see what let's see what happens. Let's experiment with this shit, baby. Yeah, exactly. Like we need what black black pink have, which is a sense essentially um, an army of underage people who will do everything mm. we tell them to do. That seem to be primarily based in South America. Um, so if you can help us in that mission <laughs> to get an army of twelve and thirteen year olds that will go wherever we go, um, you know, repeat whatever we say, and help us get noticed, um, then that'd be great. Always a good time with yeah. the un- underage South Americans. Well, I, I, um, I mean, someone uh, clip it and ship it, baby. We we, we got him. <laughs> live stream fails. Here we come, and we're not even live. Well, we're live. Wow. You're not. This is pre-recorded. Um, Hold on, did I, did I press the streaming button? No, I've had a recording. Okay. Yeah. Quick, quick question, Chris. If you were to go live on a t- platform like Twitch TV, what frame rate do you think you'd stream at? Oh, I, I'd go for twenty-four. FPS, you know, keep it cinematic. So yeah, like that's the thing. Chris admires the cinema, cin- pure cinematic presentation. When it comes to video games, you could say Chris is in the same camp as the Order eighteen eighty six. It's all about that twenty four or twenty five FPS widescreen presentation, baby. But unfortunately, Chris, while most gamers, mm. most cultured, knowledgeable, understanding gamers seek out that 24 point whatever frame per second experience <laughs> like you and I like you said the cinematic experience the way James Cameron intended some people some snooty holier than now gamers out there want the highest possible frame rates when they play their video games and that has been uh, oh. yes cast into even sharper focus this week as a major uh, let's say Highly anticipated, even if the previews for a week or two ago did fall a little bit flat, title that is just a couple of weeks away has had a big bout of pretty negative publicity as a result of the fact that it will not have uh, performance options and it will not have the uh, uh, op- give the gamers the opportunity to play it at frame rates above 30 seconds in spite of the fact that it is exclusive to next-gen consoles. The game I am, of course, mm. talking about is Gotham Knights. Um, oh shit, Gotham Knights! Yeah, did you forget about that I, game? I, I, I thought you were talking about like Pogo Stuck Three. And see, Pogo Stuck Three actually has a 120 hertz uh, version. If your TV supports um, it, it's actually got some nice variable refresh rate options as well. They've done a they've done a really nice job with that title. A bang up job, yeah, bang up job. Uh, 
Okay, so then how come Warner Brothers and their Infinite Wisdom couldn't do it with Gotham Knights? It's a very strange one. So yeah, um, essentially people kind of assumed that Gotham Knights would have at least some kind of performance option, would have would have some kind of 60 FPS option, because since the PS5 and the Xbox Series X launched, that's kind of been a bit of a standard. Even if you look at what yeah. Sony are doing, like a game as out there as Horizon Forbidden West and and, and The Last of Us Part 1, for example, which maybe is a weird exception because it's a remake, so it's remaster. <laughs> Whatever, that was a bad idea. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. People have been pretty good at at least allowing people to drop the resolution, if nothing else, to play games at a yeah. higher frame rate. Um, people assumed that was essentially a given for Gotham Knights when Warner Brothers announced that it would no longer be released for previous-gen consoles. This game is coming out on October 21st for PS5, Xbox Series X, and PC. Now, in the last couple of days prior to this news breaking, there was increasing speculation from, say, the previews and some people that were getting early looks here or there that there would not be a performance option and that it would run at a maximum of 30 FPS on consoles. And after much speculation, that was indeed confirmed on Discord, of all places, by executive producer Floor oh, Marty. <laughs> yeah, which meant that most of us then learnt, learnt the fact from... Um, a Discord screenshot, which is a weird way for news to make its way around the internet, but apparently that's the the era of video game. The, co- yeah, exactly. This is twenty twenty two where we get like announcement, uh, job and uh, game game announcements made by job post on Twitter. We get um, <laughs> game option and updates delivered to us via Discord screenshots. It's absolutely fucking mental. It is mad. But uh, I, I got a question for you though, right? Like Gotham Knights. It, at one point, it was coming out on PS4 and, and previous gen Xbox, yeah, right? Like Xbox be. One. Yeah. And then and then they cancelled. Because I remember when, when they announced Gotham Knights and they announced um, Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. it was very much a case of like, Gotham Knights is the kind of the bridge. Yeah. You know? Because that was, when it was announced, it was like, no, it's for both consoles and both generations. Um, and then Suicide Squad was like, no, no, this is coming later. And this is the next gen one, right? Mm-hmm. That's the way I always kind of remembered it. Um, I think that's so, a, yeah, that's a totally fair way to remember it. I'm looking <clears> now, and it looks as though the PS4 and Xbox One versions got confirmed that they were cancelled in May of this year, so just five months ago. Okay, um, so they got pretty okay, deep fine. into development on those. Yeah, and I guess with an announcement like that, you kind of have it. It, it comes with baggage, right? You say, "Hey, it's not going to be on previous gen," and we think about like how games such as cyberpunk, you know, to bring it up again, mm-hmm. uh, were hamstrung by trying to shoehorn it into the previous gen. So by kind of like taking off those shackles, as it were, I'm, you know, like they didn't say anything explicitly, just that it's not coming there. But one would assume that some performance gains would have happened with that decision. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, the shackles were kind of off, so to speak. Whereas instead, what this now news kind of presents is this idea that, say, maybe six, seven months ago, just prior to the cancellation of the previous gen consoles, they got into that home stretcher development, you know, the part of development where you start optimizing things and start trying to make mm. things run as best they can, and kind of had an oh shit moment where they're like, <laughs> the most powerful consoles, home consoles, that is, that we've got available to us can't run this game particularly well. And God only knows what, like, the OG... Can you imagine, like, an OG 2013 Xbox <laughs> One, what frame rates that must have no, been No, but I have a bit of a an Alex Jones conspiracy about this. Okay, let's hear it. it. Shout out to my, my man Jonesy. Um, gone, but never forgotten. Um, He's fine, my, by the way. He's my not consp- dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. Um, my conspiracy theory is this, okay? That this performance that we are seeing is exactly what we would have had on, on PS4 and Xbox oh, One. Oh, interesting. And, and I kind of feel that either A, they ran out of time, or B, they couldn't be bothered, or C, they just couldn't get it to work any better. Hmm, okay. Interesting. That, that's, that's my feeling on it. Because I, I know it's like, we'll, they say we'll run at a maximum of 30 FPS, but I mean, unless I'm making this up, but I seem to recall... It's all been a blur, Jamie. Like, there's been so much shit. Like, this week has been so bad for news. And then all of a sudden, it's like two juicy things happened, like, I think today or the previous day. It's like, oh, okay. I, I seem to recall reading somewhere that it's locked at 30 FPS. As in, like, that is what you will get. Yes, I Not I like it'll, so. it'll, be, it'll be 24 FPS and then, you know, between 25 and 30. No, it's like, no, this is 
hard locked, you'll get 30 FPS regardless of what's going on. I mean, never you'd hope never so. usually works out that way, but yeah, yeah like you'd hard locked so. in inverted commas, right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So if if that is the case, then I I think that like gives um what's the fucking word credence clear water revival to what I've just said. Um, <laughs> yeah. It gives credence to 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 my my thinking, right? Like, it, this is exactly how it would have performed in the previous ones, but they just it couldn't be bothered, couldn't make it, or didn't have time to just fix it otherwise. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely something to that. I get it. And like when, like you said, when um when when a thirty fps hard lock is 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 put forward in a game, you always do have that thing in the back of your mind. Well, like, okay, if you unlocked it, where would it settle down? Is this a 35 FPS mostly experience that you've locked at 30? Yeah. Is this a 40 to 50? Is this, you know, like, did you have issues with um, frame rates that were so turbulent that frame pacing got messed up and it was a very jittery yeah. experience and that locking at 30 was the only logical way to get it sort of, like, stable for launch? There's a lot of kind of areas and tangents that you can go down when trying to decipher what exactly is arrived led, led us to this situation. One um one thing I will offer up as a something of an explanation mm. from the aforementioned executive producer was that the de- the decision again note decision not like the the technical limitation but the decision that they yeah, made yeah. was due to quote the types of features we have in our games uh, our game rather such as untethered co-op okay. and a highly detailed open world untethered co-op like oh. personally I'm not sure why that has an impact on frame rate because so like. So hold on, what what is untethered co-op? Is that just basically saying that two people could, you and I play a game, yeah. but we are synced to a server rather than to each other's I, machines? I, I think I think I don't know about the syncing or the server side or like uh, or ha, like how that. Um, I, the only thing I gather from untethered is just like you can be as far away from each other and doing as different a thing from each other as you possibly want to do. Like you're completely like left. Oh your, right, okay. That's the right because you know like old school cop and in on the PS2 era would be like, no, you've hit an invisible wall because you're 12 feet away from your buddy. <laughs> like this is my, <laughs> yeah. my interpretation of this when I read the word untethered was that doesn't apply here. You can go wherever you want, okay. Even if you're in the same cop instance. Um, yeah, you, you're probably right on that. that. That makes a lot more sense than than me trying to conjure but, up some kind of fucking. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why that's a frame rate concern though. Like, why would why would the fact that I'm not tethered to you and that you could be on the other side of the map beating up some thugs be a hindrance on my performance? Maybe it's a case of if we are playing the same game and you are fucking in Gotham North and I'm in Gotham South, right? Yeah. But because we are in the same instance of the game on a server, whatever it might be, that it has to load both locations at the same time? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, there might be something going on there. It's still a tricky one. And I also think that the idea of putting forward a highly detailed open world as a reason for uh, (laughs) not including any kind of performance options on the player side is just a a pretty ropey explanation in this day and age, given some of the games that are coming out around the same time. And not only that, Jamie, given some of the gameplay that we've seen of the game, right, it's not a yeah. bad looking game by by any means, but I wouldn't say it's like uh, I gotta pick up my jaw from the floor and fucking clean my, clean up all the cum. You know, like it, it it's, <laughs> it's fine. Like, sorry, is the implication there that you came out of your mouth, like your jaw dropped and cum yes. came out? Or maybe you swallowed a yes. load and it came back out. Is that is that not is that not how you were? I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs of where my semen mm. um expels from. Um Okay. But I can tell you it's okay. not my mouth. Mm. Well, That's something for you I to I feel like a game, a, a game's coming. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, mm, it's like, hold, uh, like, hide the saltine. I'm interested or, now. Where it pin does the it tail out, on the donkey, but, you know. it's like, pin the spunk on the body part. Um, which, again, <laughs> kind of going back to Leonardo da Vinci, shout out to the OG, coming all over the Mona Lisa's yeah. eyebrows. He was a trendsetter, what can we say? Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is one, yeah. one thing, Chris, about Gotham Knights, though, that I do kind of want, and I might get in trouble for this with some people in the comment section. Mm. So uh, brace yourself, and I might oh. need you to be the other side of the argument and be my devil's advocate to correct me on where I'm wrong. But like, okay, I get why fr- frame rate is absolutely a big deal. Playing a game at 60 frames yeah. a second is absolutely a preferable experience to 30 FPS. Um, and yeah. when you switch yeah. back and forth between the two, most often, more often than not, you're like, oh, I can absolutely see why this is a big deal and this is important. But 
I think hitting a consistent frame rate, having a locked frame rate and frame pacing being perfect is more important than being over ambitious with a frame rate that you were never going to achieve for one reason or another. And I also think that just because other next-gen titles, whether they are cross-gen or next-gen exclusive, have been able to include performance options, that I don't think that making next-gen games should be about box ticking. And I saw, and the reason I say this is because I saw a tweet earlier on mm. that was basically like, well, hang on a second. It, uh, it, if it doesn't have performance options and it doesn't have, uh, there was something else I can't remember. Like, if it doesn't have X and it doesn't have Y, then is $70 the only thing that, about this that's next gen? Almost like a game being quote unquote <laughs> next gen is a, is a box list of like, yes, it has a performance mode. You know, yes, it can run a, a native yeah, 4K yeah. if you want it to. And yes, it costs $70. Well, I'm like, Something being next gen shouldn't be a checklist of like, does it do X, Y, or Z? It should just be about making the best possible game you can. And if they've done that, and like, and again, whether or not the best possible game they can make is good enough for you, that's for you to decide. But like, if they've done that, there's a part of me that's like, we don't need to play some like tallying up game where we see like, you know, what it, what, you know, what, yeah, like I said, what yeah. boxes it ticks over other games. And, if this was a state a question where they just said, let's look at it at 30 FPS because anything else wouldn't be conducive to a good gameplay experience, I'm kind of like, okay, I'll still play the game and see if the visuals and the gameplay and the world um, live up to that. Because, hey, like, I'll, I'll tell you something for free. I don't think GTA 6 is going to have a sexy 60 FPS mode on home consoles. I don't think I don't think anyone's <laughs> going to say jack shit. Now, will that open yeah. world be bigger and more detailed and have a lot more going on in it than Gotham Knights' open world? <laughs> Fuck yes, it will. But I still think that there's an element of the argument being the same for both for some reason. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like, there's, there's no prescribed thing that it should be what makes a next gen next gen, right? Like, I think. I think it's nice to have these performance options. And I think what's happening is probably PS5 and Xbox Series X kind of um, users have not been given a taste of the PC Master Race, uh, you know, existence and the, the yeah. styly, and they just, they just can't get enough of it. And I, I completely understand that. But, you know, on, on Warner Brothers' side, I, I think the, the main thing that you said, which kind of rings super true, is would you rather have a stable 30 or a really choppy 40? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fucking give me the stable 30 any day. You're yeah, right. Exactly. Um, if they're not able to do this, but here, here's where it gets sticky. If they're not able to do the 30, uh, uh, the 60 FPS um, as an option on next gen, why is it available on PC? You know, when, when in, in the majority of the instances, actually the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are up there with the, with the top level of, of PCs. Look, I'm not talking about like your fucking 4090s and shit, but... You know, if, if you take like percentages of what a high end PC is, it you need a hell of a lot of money to get to the performance oh, point sure. of these consoles. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, that that's one thing that conf that confuses me. But yeah, l l let's talk about that, and then I'll speak about my my next kind of point on it. I guess. But I was going to say the, the what, difficulty what, with PC is that you always need to cater to whatever the best possible hardware your end user has, right? Like you can't insert arbitrary caps into frame rate when you're releasing the PC port <clears throat> of the game because yeah. if someone has yeah. a, you know, a whatever, a however many thousand dollar graphics card, like, they need to be able to leverage that. And likewise, it's and it, Yeah, it's but what, what happens, Jamie, what happens when inevitably someone, maybe Digital Foundry, who knows, um, release a side-by-side -side comparison of a PS5 and a lesser spec PC and if, I mean, hypotheticals, yeah. And if the PC version plays better, then it's almost like, why did they do this? Well, uh, Are they, you see, I, I, I kind of think, this is, why, this is why I said, like, I think that the reason is like a timing or an effort thing. But quite frankly, maybe they're just playing it safe and just don't want a cyberpunk situation on their hands, you know? Maybe they don't want anything that's going to get people to say, ah, oh, this game's performance is shit, you know? Then yeah, then fucking yeah. serve up the thirty FPS. Yeah, personally, the, I can't the other really thing that, I, that. Yeah, yeah. The the other thing I wanted to ask you is like, or or, or maybe take note of and get your opinion on mm. is like, if you don't have the option, and let's let's take PC out of the equation because it obviously muddies the water. But if you're just on console and you don't have the option to toggle between thirty and sixty, or you don't have any benchmark to make the the difference in your head that one is better than the other 
Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's like you go to McDonald's, mm. they've only got Big Macs, and you cannot have a chicken legend because right. it's not on the menu. You're not going to you're not gonna know what you're missing out on. Yeah, I, I, I guess there's a bit of that, like you can't miss what you never had kind of thing. Um, yeah, look, there, there are other games that can, similar veins that can play at 60 FPS, but like, but you, this is... You're right, it will always this be... Is, like, this this a, particular experience. Exactly, it will always be of a similer vein and like the closer, you'll be able to make comparisons in terms of like broad strokes, like this is open world and that's open world and it, this has that le- similar level of detail to that kind of... But you're right, there's other things that Gotham Knights has going on that other games won't have going on. And I know I kind of suggested earlier that, uh, you know, Floor Marty's implication that untethered co-op had an impact on things um, was maybe a mm. little bit of a stretch. But like, yeah, co-op probably is a factor. And I think it's, it's again, there are other weird things though, like, and this is another thing that people have picked up on in the Gotham Knights community that I just reminded myself of while speaking out loud. Gotham Knights' four playable characters maxes out at two-player co-op. So there are elements here that mm. could almost suggest that... Um, Kind of like what you said, maybe less so with the effort part, but with like the time and the the technical technical elements here that like they just there were shackles on this thing. Um, and oh, hundred percent. I mean, the game yeah. the game's been delayed, right? Like, and, and funny enough, I think the news that they lost the previous gen came after the initial delay. Right. Like, yeah. it, if they'd if they'd kept to that schedule, it would have come out on previous gen consoles. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah. So yeah, it would have. All of that just makes me think that, like, yeah, these guys are fucking way over budget or way over time or shackled in some way, shape, or form. Like, you don't delay a game. Well, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, there's numerous reasons why I delay a game. But it's funny, you you just mentioned something that Cyberpunk had the exact same situation (laughs) with, where you remember, obviously, Cyberpunk got delayed to the point where it came out in December following the release of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. And most people, for example, like Jonesy, who had those consoles, that was how they played Cyberpunk. And they were like, actually, you know, there's some, like, obviously it's still a bit of a mess in terms of bugs and glitches, but there's, you know, there's some performance here and it doesn't look terrible. Where it's like, hang on a second, if this is released like fucking seven months earlier when it was supposed to, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X wouldn't have been anywhere near to being released, you would have had to have played this on a PS4 or an Xbox One, and you would not be saying what you're saying right now about performance. So, <laughs> yeah, weird. Um, and, a, and a difficult yeah. situation, like, but yeah. Like, look, also, like, if you had a checklist of what you, like, so let's say uh, the, the game's in a bit of a bad way for multiple reasons, and, uh, you know, the higher-ups at Warner Brothers, they've given us, like, almost a year in in a delay so we can work on the game some more. And, you know, you've, you've got a certain list of things that you need to do, priorities and things that you want to do. And maybe it's a case of like, they just weren't able to, you know, if they have to pick and choose five out of 10 things and one of the things was 60 FPS and they just didn't tick it because they just didn't have the time, you know, yeah. like any, anything's possible. I will just say one thing. Okay. I don't think Gotham Knights looks particularly good. It, it doesn't interest me. N- anywhere near as close as it did when it, they first showed off that gameplay mm-hmm. for however that kind of came out. But if this is a game that is fun, and if it's a game that nails the story and the mood and the feel, fucking 30 FPS is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong yeah. with 30 FPS. Yeah, exactly. It's not like they're saying, oh, yeah, this is hard capped at, at 20 FPS. Just, right. like, suck it up, fellas. Yeah, exactly. And... To almost like back up exactly what you just said, I've got a feeling when this game comes out, which by the way is actually next week, which just I mean further, you know, uh, is more evidence of the fact that I'm completely losing track of the time and all meaning of <laughs> weeks and months, and like everything's gone out the window. God of War will be out before we know it, Chris. Um, but when yeah. the game co- does come out, uh, and there was a bit of this with Saints Row as well, where it's like. Yes, there's technical things that you could point to here, but I think the more interesting conversation to have is the one about whether or not this game is actually any good. And the answer is that, hey, it seems like it's probably going to be quite mediocre. Um, <laughs> there was a MinMax podcast the other day where they played a game where they had to give their Metacritic predictions for some of the biggest releases oh. coming out between now and the end of the year. And uh, That sounds Jan- fun. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a fun idea. Um, uh, Janet Garcia, who was on that podcast, who had played, I think... 
two and a half hours of Gotham Knights, uh, the preview event a few weeks ago, predicted a 7.6 on Meta or a 76 on Metacritic. Um, as as like the Metacritic score, like the, what, or the, the, the user score will round out as the meta for, for yeah. The critics, yeah. Wow. Okay. So interesting. Take it. Take that. You know, a little, little something there for you. I'm not sure how much to read into it. But food for thought. You know what else gives us food for thought, Chris? Every week. Mm, tell me the comments we receive from our adoring fans over on YouTube. And um, look, I wanted to pick out one comment. Well, all week. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, hold on. Ador- yeah. Adoring is a bit strong. Come on, man. I was just trying to channel my inner Oblivion fan, and you know, like I was imagining everyone in our comment section as weird little short guys with torches and spiky troll like ginger hair that you lure all the way up to the fucking top of the mountain <laughs> near where the the knights kick with off, the samurai yeah. swords hang out in the end, and you you kick him off. Um, do, do Do you remember what his catchphrase was? No. Do it in an Oblivion voice, though. But. I, I, I can't remember what the adoring fan sounded like, but it's like, buy Azura, buy Azura, buy Azura. Sure what? <laughs> not, no, no, not only was that spot on, but that was actually a really good, like, generic Oblivion voice. Like, you kind of had that weird bad, tone of, like, I, how did how did they get all these voice actors to all sound weird and off in the exact same way that is still so <laughs> memorable after all this time? Um, That's why it's, it's one of the goats, man. Stop right there, criminal scum. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it is one. Of, I, I should fucking play that game again. Anyway, um, oh. there was one such adoring fan, Chris, that uh, left a comment uh, yeah. on last week's episode of the podcast that just stood out to me as being um, a really interesting reflection on the way our comment section tends to work, the way we tend to interact mm-hmm. with our mm-hmm. comment section, and how close attention we pay to all the words uh, that the viewers of this podcast choose to share with us. Yeah. This one mm-hmm. comes in from Peter Wilson, and Peter says... Ooh. I know why you skipped uh, comment of the week last time, noting that we uh, didn't actually pick a comment of the week in last week's episode. I wrote you a comment so amazingly epic and gaming related that no one ever even gave me a like. Everybody was so dumbfounded. And you know what? Peter Wilson, mm. you're 100% right. There were just so many good comments last week that we couldn't narrow it down to one. And we, you know, it just felt unfair to put any one adoring fan on a pedestal over any other, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that we were trying to cut down on the time it took to record the podcast. Hold on a second. What, did we skip a comment of the week last week, or was it the week before? I even remember anymore. It depends when yes. Peter Wils- what Peter Wilson's <laughs> what week Peter Wilson's referring to, which I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Which goes uh, further uh, proof of the fact that we don't bear enough attention. Yeah. Yeah, but I also love how we're just going to do Peter completely dirty and not mention the comment that he did leave that he was hoping was going to be read as the comment of the week. So congratulations, Peter Wilson. This was your comment of the week. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, I think the most important thing is we got there in the end, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We said your name and we're thankful for the words that you left on our uh, YouTube. And surely at the end of the day, that's what matters. Exactly. That's what matters. Um, Chris, I've got a little bit of something interesting for you. Uh, we are recording this on Sunday night for anyone that, uh, that wanders oh, and has a little there, a peek behind the curtain. Is there breaking news? It looks like there might be breaking news. Um, oh, shit. That is actually quite good for us. So what I'm going to suggest is I am going to quickly do a bit of housekeeping. I'm going to share. Um, I'm okay. going to spread the love with the good patrons of the world. Um, and then okay. maybe... Uh, rather than diving into, say, a catch-up and talking about the games we've played or the movies we've watched or TV shows we've watched this week, we're going to dive in, explore a little bit of breaking news, depending on how much is developed by the time we've got there, and then we're going to see kind of how things shake out for the remainder of the podcast. How does that sound? Wow. Yeah, this this is wild. Wild. Okay, so while Chris looks at his phone and tries to gleam any information that I might miss, (laughs) I do actually want to, and, and this isn't just, you know, for the sake of it, this is a genuine shout out and a show of appreciation to all the good folks that support us on Patreon. The link for that is patreon.com forward slash super show. Um, if you head over there, what you'll find is there are a number of different tiers, like $2 a month, month, $5 a month, $10 a month, and they've all got different you know, rewards and sort of um, benefits attached to them. For example, at $2 a month, you could jump into our Discord server where we and the rest of the community hang out and chat about things like, I don't know, uh, Konami accidentally revealing that games might be uh, right around the corner, <laughs> just uh, uh, off the top of my head. Um, and if you subscribe at the $5 tier, you get a bunch of patron exclusive content. We've got some patron exclusive podcasts that we've done in the past, spoiler casts, uh, you know, gameplay videos and let's plays and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
that's all there. We appreciate you going over. We appreciate you taking a look. But we especially appreciate everyone that is... Um, that has been generous enough to support us along the way. And like I say, every time past, present or future, whether you supported us uh, a week one for one week only, you know, fucking two and a half years ago when we started this shit, or whether you're just jumping on board now, uh, genuinely, it is the sole reason we continue to do this thing. Um, and I'm extremely grateful. We all are extremely grateful. There's some names on screen right now. Shout out to all of them for their support. And there's some additional names I'd like to thank, including Aaron Cameron, Athletic Gravy, Bill Caesar, Brimstone, Cole K, Crow's Perch, Ice Not Rock Salt, Jesper Camdal Nielsen, Leo Merger, Mindful Pig, Mr. Anthropic, Pastors Guild, Brett Z. Oh, excuse me. I should say, these next names are the big dogs, the head honchos. <laughs> oh. I didn't want to just yeah, roll I'm it. glad you yeah. covered yourself. Yeah. It's an important, it's an it's it, it's a it's a fair distinction to make. It's a distinction that they've earned. And those good folks are Brett Z, aka Shellshock, Doppler, Geometric Potter, Hacksaw Book Read, Manuel Guerrero, and Peaswad. Gang, I don't even if I'm even allowed to call people gang anymore. My my the use of my vocabulary for sort of like collective groups of people has become extremely limited because I'm 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 getting more and more educated every day, like not to call people guys, for example, because some people aren't cool with that. Um, but then gang, yeah. I started using, and apparently that might have a racial or violent connotation, so gang might not be a great one either. I'm going to say folks, which is a popular <sighs> one at the workplace. Oh, no, can't, can't, can't say that. Can't say that. What's wrong with folks, Chris? Tell me. Is it because uh, they uh, might be queer as folk or something? <laughs> I don't know. You, you said it, man. I, <laughs> no, I don't know. It just kind of, I, I think that shit goes fucking crazy enough that, I can say you can't say that anymore, and I'm probably right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When in doubt, say tell for someone that they're not allowed to say that anymore, and nine times out of ten, maybe eight times out of ten, you're probably correct. Um, do you know what else we got used to not saying anymore on this very podcast, Chris? Yeah. Um, the word Silent Hill. Because fuck me. Um, <laughs> like I said earlier, this podcast has been going for like uh, over, well over two and a half years at this point, I think. I, again, I lose track of time. And in that time, one thing that has pretty yeah. much never uh, not been by our side is the constant rumours that something Silent Hill or Silent Hill adjacent is always around the corner. Uh, there's always a leak. There's <coughs> always a rumour. There's a trademark here. There's Konami doing something weird over there. There's a VGC article or a rogue tweet from some guy on Twitter with an anime profile picture. Basically, there's always something happening. And I don't know about you, Chris, but it kind of got to the point where it was nut up or shut up, shut up right? It was like, don't yeah. let, let, we're yeah. not going to bring this up anymore. We're not going to invoke the name of Silent Hill until it seems like something is really happening. And in the middle of this podcast recording, <laughs> at 12 minutes past 10 on a Sunday night, well, that's UK time anyway, it seems like something is finally happening. Konami have tweeted, and I will read this verbatim, in your restless dreams, do you see that town? The latest updates for the Silent Hill series will be revealed at the hashtag Silent Hill transmission on Wednesday, October 19th. At 2 p.m. PDT, there's also a tweet of the exact same wording from the official Silent Hill Twitter account, um, both of which which then link to any official website or more of a holding page um, on Konami's yeah. own website. So this doesn't so seem like a weird Jamie, hack or anything like that. No, it's like a fucking official thing. And the, So there is a website, konami.com forward slash games forward slash Silent Hill. Mm. I try to go on there. I didn't enable cookies because fuck people that ask for cookies and uh, unless they're real life cookies, in which case go ahead. And I try to like go through the whole region bullshit and it won't let me because it says I need to enable cookies, but now right. I can't enable them again. So, so yeah. you might have to do it. No, I just did the exact same <laughs> as you. And it, it like, um, it doesn't uh, seem what, to did be. You? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, at the moment I'm relying on other uh, Twitter individuals like Nibble to give us a little bit more information. Um, Nibble said that, um, yeah, <laughs> Nibble basically <laughs> pointed out a reminder that something called Silent Hill, the short message, was recently rated in Korea. Yeah. There seems to be some implication, again, the fact that this is some kind of a stream um, or, or showcase called the Silent Hill Transmission. There is obviously an opportunity here or the potential for more than one Silent Hill-related property to be yeah. discussed. Um, like I, I, I lose track of things, but I think uh, the last time I checked, there were as many as three different Silent Hill projects that could be in some kind of development. Um, whether that's a Silent yeah. Hill Two remake at Uber <clears throat> Team or an actual sort of Silent Hill Five coming out of Konami, we'll see. 
Or, or is this just a remake of Silent Hill 1? Because it's weird. Like, I, I was staring at that logo thinking how weird it looks. And I think it's just because everything Silent Hill related in the past, like, handful of years has been Silent Hills, right? And then all right. of a sudden you drop that S, which is a project that never came to fruition. And then all of a sudden you drop that S and I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, huh, that just looks so fucking weird to me now. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That font doesn't look very familiar either. Like, I'm not really sure. No. Yeah. No, it doesn't. But hey, like, I, I wouldn't say I'm like a keen observer of horror game fonts to to know my stuff. So no. And I think the other thing is that I think Silent Hills is so synonymous with, that Silent Hills, plural, is so synonymous with Kojima and the kind of the Guillermo del Toro, yeah. Norman, Reedus nonsense, Norman Reedus nonsense, and the fact that that never materialized, that I think um, in this coming week, Konami will be probably doing everything they possibly can in their power to distance themselves from any discussion around the project that was Silent Hills or PT or anything like that, because... I think that's probably a chapter of their lives and the history of that franchise that that they're not particularly uh, keen to reflect on. Um, but yes, this um, it does seem like something mm. is really happening in Silent Hill Land. It, it, it's it, it's about damn times. <laughs> what I'll say. Yeah, another um, another little thing that's been noticed is that um, someone by the name of Masahiro Ito has been like sort of like uh, retweeting. Um, uh, this stuff and like uh, you know, quote tweeting it. He, um, I think, is currently freelance, but he uh, pr- was very prominent in the art direction and environment design on the original Silent Hills one, two, and three before leaving and going off to do uh, other things. Um, so uh, that would be a big okay. coup, for example, if um, if Masahiro Ito was back on the scene. Perhaps, like for, uh, for example, I think he was. He might be like the dude who uh, conceptualized Pyramid Head, for example. So not a bad ah, right, homie okay. to have yeah. uh, on the scene if you're going to have one. Homeboy. Home, 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 homeboy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's just like, it's good that this stuff's happening, finally. Because <laughs> I, I kind of feel like Silent Hill was one of those things. It, it, it was almost going the way of Half-Life 3 at the right. stage. yeah. Right? Like, is this game ever going to f- fucking materialize? Exactly. Uh, With- but there. There it is. Exactly. And much like Half-Life 3 as well, there was so much evidence, whichever way you looked, that things did happen. Conversations were had, trademarks were made. Like, things were going on behind the scenes, but it's like, where is this thing and why aren't we seeing it and why don't we know anything? And it seems like soon we will. Um, but oh, un- yeah. unless you've got anything sort of further to speculate on the Silent Hill front, I might suggest, Chris, that we kind of get back to the usual scheduled programming and just uh, yeah. thank Konami yeah, yeah. for their very welcome um, and potentially even thumbnail or video title worthy uh, <laughs> addition to this podcast. No, we'll, find, I, we'll see. I'm, I'm not. I'm not so sure about that. But okay. Maybe. Fair enough. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to. We'll have to wait until Wednesday, I guess. And next week's podcast will be the interesting one. This one's the filler, the amuse bouche. Yes, agreed. Agreed. I'm actually. Look, I'm not a Silent Hill guy, and I'm genuinely. I'm gonna sit. Uh, I'm gonna get some popcorn, and I'm gonna watch the Silent Hill transmission, or the SHT, as I like to call it, the shit. Um, <laughs> the shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I like speaking it. of shit, Chris, well, did you get up mm. to anything fun this week? <laughs> wow, thanks. Uh, yeah, two things that I think are not shit, but some people kind of do, I guess. Um, I finished watching Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power on uh, Amazon Prime. The the greatest deal in non-game... No, I, <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, I really liked it. I really, really, really fucking liked it. I couldn't stop thinking about it, actually. Like, yes, it... Uh, the series as a whole is being kind of like derided, not not just from like a racial point of view with like racist being annoyed that like there are black people in the world. Yeah. Um, but or, or people are kind of like talking shit about Rings of Power because of its pacing, which I thought was fine. Uh, the co- Series don't always need to be at fucking breakneck speed, right? Like it's, there is something to be said for setting up what is eventually going to be, I believe, like an eight season <laughs> story, Jeez. right? It's crazy like, that they like, can say okay, that fine. like when season one is just finished, but yeah, I get you. Oh, well, it's, it's Bezos money, baby. I guess. So. You know, like fucking hell. Um, and people kind of like derided the, the writing and some of the decisions and the dialogue. And, and my perspective coming from this is I, I'm a fan of the Lord of the Rings movies, not the Lord of the Rings books. Okay. And, 
as a fan of the Peter Jackson stuff, I felt like it was Peter Jackson enough to be like catch my attention and different enough to stand on its own legs. Yes, some of the dialogues are were stupid, some of the plot points were stupid. But then again, like fucking hell, man. I've I've watched things the way people were fucking crazy about like going ape shit of how good this was and I'm watching it like yeah it was alright yeah, you happens. know so each to their own like that's just fucking all it is it's each to their own I really enjoyed it um, some of the stuff was obvious some of the twists and turns but just seeing it unfold on screen in ultra HD as well fucking amazing absolutely amazing and like I think anyone who liked those Peter Jackson films just give it a chance like you, the thing you're not really going to have here are those grand fucking battle scenes. You're not going to have the Battle of Helm's Deep in this, but it is building up to it. And there are some genuinely cool kind of set pieces or concepts or ideas and effects that are going into this thing. So, yeah, I, I, I fucking, I can't rate it enough. Like, honestly, it was really, really good. So that's the one thing that I quite like that a lot of people kind of think is shit. Um, and the other thing is, uh, it's Dota time, baby, because um, the International Eleven, the International Eleven has kicked off. Um, they are in uh, group stages right now. Um, so what did they start on Saturday and Saturday and today, I believe? So I've been watching some games. Uh, really hyped for it. Really cool. Um, timing is a bit awkward because it's in Singapore, okay, and nice. we are. Yeah, I think we are like seven hours ahead of Singapore in the UK. So inevitably, I'm going to miss the mornings kind of games. And I'll only be able to watch the last batch of games in like noonish morning, noon, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, like so far, so good. Like, it, it's funny. I haven't played Dota in maybe since the beginning of the year. But something about just watching Dota esports is so fucking hype, man. As long as you know, like, what you're watching. Sure. <laughs> like, I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't expect you to kind of get into it and be like, oh, this is hype. You wouldn't know what the fuck's going on. Um, but yeah, it, it's you're cool. Right. And I just fucking, <laughs> I just love the TI season. Um, and I just, yeah, it's just a, a good time to be an esports fan. Nice. I'll say that much. No, uh, I, Yeah, but what about you? Um, I'm, I'm more playing than watching, actually, now you mention it. Um, That's Good, it's good, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although that doesn't inevitably mean that I'm behind on all the cool things like Rings of Power that I, you know, never even got close to starting, let alone finishing. Um, I will say, um, just to get it out of the way quickly, because I don't have much to to talk about on that front because of the nature of what it is, I finally pulled the trigger on The Last of Us Part 1 because I had a moment oh. of weakness and I was feeling sorry for myself, and I bought it, and, you know, it's one of those full things. Full price? Yeah, full price. Um, yeah, oh, I know, you I know. scumbag. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's one of those <laughs> things that, like, having now played most of The Last of Us Part One ag again, um, yeah, <laughs> doesn't give me any, you know, additional ammunition or anything interesting to add to the conversation that we had a couple of weeks or months ago, whenever it was. Like, sure, it's still yeah, the exact that's, same that's game, fair. exact same value, value proposition. I'm in no position, one way or the other, to, um, to, you know promote this game anymore or, or to put people off any more than they already feel about it it is just what it is <laughs> yeah. and it was the time for me where i wanted to play it um the, are you enjoying it though i am i am but i would i love okay. the last of us and it yeah. didn't uh, the price point didn't bother me as much as it did bother some other people and it was a time in my kind of gaming sphere where i was like i've got time for this and i want to play this game now so i played it um, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. I made that I made an adult consumer decision, Chris. Which, if more people were <laughs> able to do, then that debate wouldn't have even started to begin with. Do I want this thing? Yes. Is it worth it at that price? No. Should I wait? Yes. There you go. I fixed it for you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> luckily, though, Chris, there was no value proposition at all when it came to uh, Scorn because Scorn released day one on oh. Game Pass, and I played it on PC. Hell yeah! Also, lucky that there was no value proposition with Scorn because I don't think I like Scorn. Um, <laughs> uh, I need to. I, I want to say up front. I need to play a hell of a lot more of it. I've probably only played about an hour or so. Um, but I was okay, kind of having played that hour. Do you want to play more? I want to give it another shot. Is it different? Okay. Yeah. Because because I was going to say there's a difference between needing to play more, wanting to play more, and then just playing more. There is enough want in the mix for me to do it. Um, it's not an okay. obligation. 
And I think that one more okay. stems from what I was hoping I'd get from Scorn prior to release. Like, I watched the skill up preview, I think, from a few weeks ago, whenever it was that they kind of first got hands on. And I was like, actually, yeah. now that I know this isn't like a jumpy, obnoxious horror game and is more of mm. like this oozy, atmospheric um, adventure game with puzzle elements and occasional very bad combat, um, I might <laughs> give this a go. And I did give it a yeah. go, and I felt very close to getting what I wanted from it, but I was just, um, I found it a bit a, a bit obnoxious in its design in a way that really um, hamstrung the experience for me, like level design, the rate, the frequency with which I felt like I was getting lost, or the frequency at which I found that like puzzles were not difficult and often had very easy solutions, but exactly where you mm. need to go to like start them or start the process that leads to this process, I found that was often more obscure than it needed to be. Also, technically, I am not enough of a PC Master Race guy to complain about FOV, but for some reason, this game made me sick as fuck. Um, I, my, <laughs> my head was not happy. Um, yeah. yeah, so... But it's, at the same time, it's a fascinating game. I, I think the the kind of the Giga esque art style they've gone for, like it's one thing trying to kind of copycat that style and make your own sort of you know world around that, and I think it's another thing to put the the level of detail, the intricate sort of like work that's gone into all of these environments that they've done. I think a huge amount of credit has to go to them on that front, and I think it's got some interesting ideas. And I'm just I really wanted to get swept up by that world and. That, that some of the design and um, that aesthetic, for want of a better way of putting it, and too many mm. technical and gameplay elements pulled me out. That's And that's why I kind of want to go back to the fold at least one more time to see if that's still the case. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, it's also, um, yeah, it's on Game I mean, Pass, I mean, though, so, right? Like, I, I, yeah, exactly. Like, no, no harm, no foul. I also know that you're just biding your time until Ragnarok comes out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the other thing with The Last of Us, right, is that I knew I could finish The Last of Us, uh, Last of Us excuse me, um, in a weekend if I needed to. Yeah. And so I've only yeah, got a yeah. few more decisions to make. Like Gotham Knights, I'll have to make a decision about um, the Modern Warfare 2 campaign is slightly allevi- alleviated by the fact you can start playing it a week early. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, um, and I've put that week off work for Ragnarok. So, Chris, basically, as long as I don't die between now and then, I am looking <laughs> both ways twice before I cross the road every day. Um, we're right as rain. Yeah, I hear, I hear you, brother. I hear you. So one thing I got to ask you though is, why why haven't you watched the bear yet? Uh, well, the one one answer is that I don't have Disney Plus, and so I don't have that kind of. I'm just going to sit in front of the couch and go on my PS5 and like launch an app, and it's just there. So right, yeah, if yeah, I were yeah. to find uh, uh, like ways to circumvent my Disney Plus situation, it would usually probably involve a PC, and it's like, am I going to sit at my desk and watch an entire season of The Bear? It's 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 on the to-do list, and I, the reason I can prove to you it's not on, on the to-do list is without even seeing it myself, I have already recommended it to other people based on your recommendation. Someone this week oh, told yeah, me bro. they wanted a new <laughs> show to watch, and I said, I've just been recommended this, and I explained it to them the way you explained it to me and said, does that sound like your thing? And I don't think they've started it yet either, but I, I'm trying to spread the word, even not having seen it myself. So Spread oh, the I'm word, on, baby. I'm on board, Chris. Uh, just not quite there yet. You're on board. Hell yeah. Board. Yeah, I oh, can't say enough good things about that. But yeah, anyway, let us carry on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you can't say enough good things about the bear, Oh, but Chris, gamers, yeah. at least as of the last 48 hours, are struggling to find any good things to say about <laughs> Platinum Games after a dispute between the developer Yeesh. and ex-Bayonetta voice actor Helen Taylor came to light in the past week, um, seemingly over a dispute around fees that she was potentially due to be paid for her work on Bayonetta 3, work which we now know uh, does, uh, will not be materialising. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think it was, uh, was, is it Jennifer Hale? People had noticed it was yes. a voice actress who had uh, begun, uh, uh, re- appeared as though she'd replaced Helena Taylor as the voice of Bayonetta in the build up to yeah. the release of Bayonetta 3, which is, I think, which, just around the corner. <laughs> which, can I just say, is supremely ironic when we're talking about, um, like, dispute on pay. And you're saying that they now have paid for, for Jennifer Hale to be right, exactly. to be a voice actress. Like, they, they, I don't think she comes cheap, Jamie. Is what I'm saying. It's like if I'd agreed to be in a film and I said there was a dispute on pay, so I left. They've hired Leo DiCaprio, though. It's all good. Like, he, he's he's <laughs> slutting for me. 
You're right. It, it, there's something yeah. very odd about that. Um, there's also something very odd, though, about the kind of the back and forth that is this has created between Platinum Games Ugh. and Helena Taylor herself. It seemed like it started when Platinum Games suggested that it might have come down to scheduling issues and that Helena Taylor might not have had the time necessary to commit to all the work required to record all the voice acting yeah. for Bayonetta 3. Helena Taylor uh, came out herself in a series of videos that I personally saw on Twitter. They may have been posted elsewhere, though, to... Uh, yeah, I saw it on Twitter yeah, as well. Put those rumours to rest, suggest that there were no scheduling issues, and in fact that the reason she turned down the opportunity to voice Bayonetta in the upcoming game was that because when all was said and done, the flat fee that she was offered, with absolutely no back end or any additional kind of perks whatsoever, the flat fee she was offered for an entire video game's worth of work was $4,000. She described it as insulting, she dropped out of the project, and has asked fans not only to boycott the game, but to take the money they would have spent on the video game and instead donate it to charity. Um, which, I mean, hey, like, charity, that's that's charity's totally gonna happen. Good. Yeah, um, but that's totally going to happen. I, I I know all the Bayonetta neckbeards are going to go and do that for sure. Yeah, that's the awkward thing yep, about a game yep, like yep. Bayonetta is it's like <clears> when <throat> appealing to Bayonetta fans to boycott Bayonetta, you're appealing to some like people who are pretty darn attached to to the franchise, to the series. Like This will be some people's most anticipated game of the year. That's a tough audience to yeah. kind of pry away from that product. Um, Chris, before we kind of delve into the weeds here, like I will say the back and forth mm. did uh, continue on a little bit more. Hideki Kamiya over at Platinum, who is he? The, was he the director of Bayonetta three as well? Um, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he, um, he infamous on Twitter already as it is. He uh, sort of pseudo responded um, to uh, Helen and Taylor's claims. He didn't address her or the claims directly, but essentially put out a very vague tweet talking about how lies or untruths are very bad things, and people, hey, don't lie, folks. Um, but essentially, he implied that what Helena Taylor claiming was claiming was untrue. Naturally, he seemed probably a little bit aware on some level, given the heat that Helena Taylor's videos were getting, that this would uh, result in some heat coming his way. So he rather ominously reminded people to follow his rules, um, which uh, <laughs> he has a number of different rules, namely that uh, he bans or blocks rather everyone who uh, replies to him in a language other than Japanese, which it turns out when Helen Taylor made a series of videos throwing Platinum Games under the bus, a lot of people replied to Hideki Kamiya or quote quote tweeted Hideki Kamiya um, in a language other than Japanese. That then yeah. led to Hideki Kamiya um, probably spamming the block button uh, just blocking every single account that he could see. Um, <laughs> and Chris, you pointed out to me earlier that it seems as though when an account, uh, when a large amount of blocks come from a single account, um, it trips up the Twitter ban bot. They investigate the cause of the bans, and that account itself then gets locked out, which it seems as though is what's happened yeah. to Hideki Kamiya, who I think last time I checked, you can't even open his Twitter right now. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd expect him to. If that was the cause of the shutdown, I'd expect him to be back uh, shortly. I mean, I don't know when shortly would be, but he, he should be back. With Unless he got harassed out of, to the point where he just deleted his Twitter, I mean, which is also a possibility. When you go on the page, it says this count doesn't exist. And when you look at tweets that yeah. he has made, it says this count is from, this tweet is from yeah. an account that no longer exists. I mean, yeah, we'll see. Um <laughs> but yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. He always seemed like he had a very testing relationship with social media to begin with, so he probably isn't take, <laughs> didn't have to take the decision like with too much of a heavy heart. But it is still kind of mad um, that this might have driven um, the director of Beta to three off the platform. Let's go back to the original situation, though, Chris and Helen Taylor's yeah. claims. I mean, fundamentally, if her claims that she was offered four thousand dollars flat for voicing an entire protagonist in a video game, um, that's kind of um, Unjust, to say the least, in my mind. Yeah, I mean, that does sound like I have no idea what a voice actress or actor should be earning. But I would imagine that for an entire fucking video game, which is way more than any kind of like TV or film voice acting that needs to be done. Like you're talking about the lines of dialogue are absolutely insane. Um, yeah, I would imagine that that's a small amount, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, it, it certainly... I mean, I, I'm the same I mean, they, as you, they, I don't know. But, they, you know, yeah. maybe if they just added some perks, you know, like free garlic bread, um, may, maybe we're talking about a different kind of situation. See, But who knows? This is why you should get in there as the person that, like, you know, barters an agreement between two different parties. I can, I can see it now. Oh, yeah. You going back into the room with Helen Taylor and then saying, like, look, 
I can't get them to budge on the price. Like four grand is is, is the bottom line. <laughs> no ifs, and or buts. But there is something else I'm getting. Do you prefer your garlic bread with or without cheese, baby? We're going to Hollywood. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and Jamie, they're gonna throw in a free copy of Bayonetta 2. So <laughs> everybody everybody's winning, baby. And you don't even get to specify the platform. It's like, yeah, it's the it's the Wii U version. Sorry, it's all we had. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I I I only have one thing to say on this, Jamie. Okay, okay. Uh, and and please, please indulge me. Okay, how is it that we are in uh, the year of our Lord, twenty twenty two, and shit like this is still happening? Well, like I don't know. It, it shouldn't happen, right? Like th- there was reports that like um, people at the, I can't remember exactly what it was, but people at Nintendo they got fired because they were trying to start a union, and it, it's just like why are people still taking so much fucking advantage of other people in ways that are so fucking obvious. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's not like, it, like you, you're talking about the, the lead voice actress for Bayonetta one and two. Okay. Like the voice mm-hmm. of Bayonetta and saying like, no, we're going to pay you much less because it's either you want it or you don't. We've got someone else waiting. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it it's just matter. bizarre, man. Especially because, no, again, it, you listen to Helena Taylor's videos and she makes it very clear that she wasn't asking for the world and she just wanted, you know, a fair pay, if, like fair, you know, like for the work, volume of work that she had to put in and a reflection of the work that she'd uh, okay, put but hold on, but, 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 but pinch of salt, right? Like, we don't know what she asked we, for. We don't know what she's asked for. And also for Hideki Kamir to come out and essentially even suggest that she's lying is also a fucking big move to make. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, like... To go through the like the rigmarole of okay, like yes, we're going to let our you know the lead actress that we've worked with through all these years walk away. We're going to hire a replacement. Hope that they sound similar. Deal with the inevitable fan questions and fan complaints of people like where's so and so. And then also like if you know that Helena Taylor's walked because you offered her four thousand dollars, you have to be at least somewhat aware that she has the potential to do what she did to come out and say I'm yeah. not in this game because they yeah. offered me four thousand dollars. So it just seems like a weird mess of a situation. I was really rather stunned by by Camille's response because, like I said, to come out and just say, "Oh yeah, this," or at least imply, I should uh, should say, uh, <laughs> that this person is lying. Um, kind yeah. of like I said, a, a very ballsy move um, that muddies the waters a little bit on what really is going on here. But it's just a mess all round. Yeah, I, I I hope like more information comes to light on this because I I just think as an industry we can. I say we, I'm not in the fucking industry. But like, as an industry, they should aim to do better. Yeah. But then again, Jamie, maybe she went to Hideki Kamiya and said, well, you know the voice that I was doing for Bayonetta in 1 and 2? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. I, I'm going to make it fucking super high-pitched and nasally. And he's like, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, who knows? There might have been variables like that. There might have been variables where, like, it was a mix between a pay dispute and a slight scheduling dispute, as you suggested earlier. Yeah. It could have been that actually uh, Helena Taylor, like one of the things that Helena Taylor did very early on in the video was she, I think, probably speculated, because I don't know if it's public, that the Bayonetta franchise Mm. has generated, I think she said $450 million. I don't want to fucking cast any stones here, so don't, you know, shoot the messenger. But in my mind... When someone comes out that early on in their explanation video to outline the extraordinary amounts of money that a project they're associated with has made, it sounds as though they're trying to make the claim for like, like that's something she, I'm not suggesting that she asked for too much money, but someone who's aware (laughs) that that it happened with GTA 4. Like there was a dude who agreed to voice Nico Bellic, voice Nico Bellic, everything was fine, was happy with his pay. As soon as he found out how much GTA 4 made, he came back and said, I wasn't paid enough. Sorry, bro. Like you sign across the dotted line. Now that oh, isn't the that, case. That happened Helena. with the Witcher. C- the Witcher. That happened with CD Project Red and the Witcher. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. guy who wrote the, the, author, Witcher the Witcher was like, "These games aren't going to make any money. You can have the license and the IP for nothing." They made money. He was like, "Oops, I made a mistake. Can I have some more money, please?" <laughs> now I, I'm not yeah, suggesting that's yeah. the case with Helena Taylor, but there is an element here where it's like, did she overestimate how much more she could ask for based on what she saw as the successes of Bayonetta one and two? That's pure speculation. Mm. I do not know. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I don't want or, to throw anyone. Or maybe the, the maybe the scheduling conflicts were like, oh, she was only available for four days to do the recording and therefore they offered her $1,000 a day. 
You know, like it could be something like that. Which still sounds low, I think, for... Well, it depends, actually. I, I, I don't know. I should have done some research on voice acting pay. Um, <laughs> maybe one of us will make it one day, yeah. Chris, and we can come back to this and uh, respond on it. Uh, have you heard what we sound like? There's no way we're getting anywhere near a fucking booth other than our own making. I mean, if I want to, like a nerdy, nasally, weird, uncomfortable, you know, s- slightly you know, off-putting <laughs> South African Greek voice in a video game that I work on in the future. Wow. Um, wow. Thanks. Mm. I'll know to give Alex Jones a call. Um, hey. Hey. Well, look, look, they are, Bethesda has co- have contacted me. They're going to pay me four thousand dollars and uh, as much garlic bread as I like to uh, to star, be the lead role in Oblivion Two. So, as the adoring, as the adoring fan, as the adoring fan, yeah. By Azura, Chris, I can I can almost hear it now. And and what was the other guy? Cicero. Cicero. Yes, he was in the uh, the uh, Dark Brotherhood, right in Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, good times. We should play. We should. We should talk about the Elder Scrolls more often. Um, I, I think I'm going to go and play Oblivion right now. Actually, actually, uh, why not? Let's. That sounds like a good plan. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the Platinum Games and and Helena Taylor situation remains a he said she said. But the nice thing about that is you can make it a he said she said you said by letting us know your thoughts Ooh. and opinions, whether that's in the comment section down below or reaching out to us on social media, like on Twitter with the handle at Super Show Pod, and apparently according to Chris on YouTube with the handle at Super Show. Who fucking thought it? I didn't. Um, I'll, I'll try and change it back to Super Show Pod. We'll see. But anyway. ah, it's all right. Um, thank you, though, for joining us uh, this week. We hope mm-hmm. you enjoyed the uh, the brief intervention that Konami delivered halfway through. And, uh, of course, all the more reason to join us next week where we'll be talking about the Silent Hill transmission, sorry, the shit uh, itself. Um, <laughs> reviews will have dropped from Gotham Knights, all kinds of interesting things. I might have seen the bear. You know, you're going to have to listen to next week's episode to find out all of the above. And in the meantime, please do check out patreon.com forward slash super show. Consider pledging. Look at the benefits. If it sounds like your cup of tea, we're here for you and we will welcome you with open arms. Chris, thank you so much for joining me on this podcasting adventure. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, thanks for hosting. Always doing a good job. Ah, that's very kind of you. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> and if you agree with Chris, then hopefully that means you will see us back here next week where I won't be hosting. Um, probably Jonesy will depends if he's alive we'll find out then yeah bye (laughs) see ya